Hi, Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. And today, let's take a look at fly reels, explaining fly reels. Now, fly reels are fairly simple beasts, but there are enough different styles and different approaches to making them and different features that we have that does create some confusion. Um, so hopefully I'll clear that up, especially what the terms mean and what we're referring to. Now, I'm going to start with trout reels and I'm going to move on to more heavy duty reels but they all basically work the same way. They're called single action which means one turn of the crank is one turn of the spool. So you make one turn you pick up one spool width of line. The ones I've got here are probably 99.9% .9 of the fly reels that are sold. So we're going to cover all the fly reels you're likely to encounter. So let's start with trout. These four and this one over here are typical trout reels. And there are different styles and I want to talk about one aspect first. Now you see the center of this reel. It's not very big. It's about the size of that uh, cap here. It's called the arbor. And what you do is you wind your backing on this and you wind your uh, fly line on this and the center, as I say, is quite, you might be able to see this against my shirt. There we go. You'll see that there is n a very, very small arbor in the middle of it. That's a standard arbor reel. And years ago, that was it. That's when you bought a fly reel, it was made this way. Uh, the, it kept the diameter small, and it kept uh, the overall weight down. But it had a disadvantage in when you're trying to pick up line fast, one turn of the crank didn't pick up much line. So these are going out of favor. I mean, I still have a bunch. I still like them. I still use them. But they are going out of favor for what we call large arbor reels or mid arbor reels, which the hole is smaller. So instead of having that little arbor in the middle, you've got basically almost like the rim of the wheel of a car. And the line goes on the rim, if you want to think of it that way. And you've got these spokes in the middle that just hold the uh, the uh, spool in place. Um, and the whole idea behind this is one turn of the crank and you're picking up a lot of line. So, you know, that when you want to pick up line fast, it'll work for you. Also, the other good thing about it is that the loops of fly line that are stored on the reel are large loops, not small loops. So when you pull line off the uh, reel it doesn't come off looking like a slinky and um, that can happen with very small arbor reels small reels it packs the, the fly line into tight little coils so when it comes off it comes off in a slinky fashion so that's not a great thing to have happen so large arbor does two things it allows quick pickup of line and it prevents your fly line from getting those little tight coils in it of course the idea behind these two reels, though, you end up with, you know, your large arbor reel being quite a bit bigger than the same equivalent reel in the small arbor reel or standard arbor. So this is standard arbor six weight reel. This is considered a, what uh, Danielson calls a 411, which means basically it's a six weight wheel, five to six. And this is about a five to six as well. So these are equivalent reels and you see the difference in size that the large arbor reel is quite a bit bigger. So, um, you know, you guys, like anything in this business, there's compromises. You know, you can end up with a, you know, a big reel, but it picks up quickly. You're going to end up with a little reel, but it doesn't pick up so quickly. And you have the coiling problem. Now, there's other flavors that are involved, too. And I, I want to take the spool off. And you see this has a frame. I'll put it up against my shirt. You can see the frame. And that frame uh, gives structural strength to the reel. Now, when you're putting your uh, spool on, of course, your line can get caught in the frame. So it can be a bit of a fiddle. And you'll, if you look closely here, you'll see how I've got my tippet through the hole. I put my tippet through one of the perforations. And that way, I can take this on and off all day and I don't have to worry about pinching my fly line. A little trick when using a full frame reel. 
You've, I've got other reels out there that are, have an open frame design. So you can see here, there's no cage around it. It's just got a top and a bottom. The cage is a little bit more fiddly to use. The open style are easier to use. These tend to be less rugged. So it's a trade-off between rigidity and um, ease of use. You know, each design has its good and its bad points. Most of my reels are cage designed, but a few of them are not. Now, there's another aspect to, uh, to fly reels, and this is an old style reel right here. It's a n relatively new reel, but it's built to an old style. I think the style is something like 70 years old. And this is a more of a current design. And one of the main differences is involves something called a palming ring. And this reel doesn't have one. You can see the spool uh, stops right here, the silver part. The dark gray part is the frame of the reel. So this is where your spool is. Now, the big problem with that, if you've got uh, a big fish on and it's running, you've got a problem trying to, what we do call, palm the reel. And palming involves putting your hand underneath the spool and letting that palming rim run on your hand. And you can use that to apply pressure to stop a fish. So if you had a reel that had no palming ring like this one, then you can't do it. Now you say to yourself, oh, wait a minute, isn't that what drags are for? Well, there's another issue. This is a really old reel, so it's dirty, but it does show you what I'm talking about. This reel does not have a drag. It has those two poles. You'll see one on the left and one on the right. And those poles create a click. So I'll put this together. Hear it? Now, a lot of people think that's a drag. No, that's not a drag. That's to prevent overspooling. So if I yank line off fast, it doesn't backlash. If I didn't have the, that clicker in here, the paw, then what would happen is when I pull line off very quickly, push big bird's nest. You know how that happens with bait cast reels? What well, it can happen with fly reels too. So what we do with this particular style of reel is we have these paws in, in there to prevent that from happening. Now this particular reel also has a paw. You can hear it, but it's quieter. And the reason for that is it has a disc drag. You see under this knob is a disc drag. So by just like a spinning reel, tighten it or loosen it, I get more or less drag. So I don't need the loud paw to stop over spooling because I have a disc drag on the back. So you can get a trout reel with a pawl, or you can get a trout reel with a disc drag, or you have this style of reel here, which has a slightly different drag system, but it still works the same way. It functions as a disc drag and does the same job. And so you've got a combination of drag and clicker, or you've got a pawl system which prevents overspooling. Now that's common in trout reels, and this is a disc drag version right here. Um, this is a disc drag, this is a disc drag. These two are click and pawls. A click and pawl is fine for trout. To tell you the truth, I mean, it's nice to have a drag. I, in all the years I've trout fished, I missed a drag once. And that was simply a problem where I had got myself up on a very slippery algae covered rock in, surrounded by very fast current, in a precarious place, I hooked into a massive brown trout that was running on my click and pawl reel, and it was running downstream at a hell of a rate. And I'm thinking to myself, I've got to get off this, but I'm applying palming pressure to keep control of the fish because I don't want it to get into some rocks. I have to let go to get my waiting staff to get off the rock. I can't get off the rock without the waiting staff or else there's a big hole in front of me. I'm in the hole. So I ran out of hands. It was the only time I've ever been out on a trout stream, caught a big trout and say, oh boy, do I ever need a disc drag right now? So yeah, it can happen, but it's not common. When we get into salt water, totally a different thing. These are salt water reels. And I wanna show you one of the features about a salt water reel. 
First, you can see that it has a cage for strength. Strength, very important. It's made out of an alloy, aluminum alloy, that doesn't rust in salt water. Very important. And the other important thing about this reel is it has a sealed drag. And the uh, manufacturer says it's sealed down to 20 atmospheres. So this knob, when tight, not only holds the spool on, but it also seals the drag against any ingress of salt water. So it's very, very important uh, to have a reel, uh, if you're using it in salt water, to have a reel either is an old style, style um, drag made out of cork, which you cover with lubricant and it's fine in salt water, they work like a charm, or it's sealed. If you don't have a sealed drag and you use it in salt water, you can get all sorts of bad things happening. As happened to my son, all of a sudden his drag started going, you know, like there wasn't any drag. And I took it apart when we got back to the cabin and the salt water had turned the disc of the uh, reel to like black powder. So it was like he was running on graphite powder, like he was running on a lubricant. So, I mean, his drag was useless. So that's what happens when you bring a, uh, a freshwater or reel to salt uh, in a disc drag. You can have bad things happen to the disc drag. Salt water attacks everything. Now, this has a knob on the back for drag adjustments, just like the other reels. Um, and... These reels can be set up for left-hand retrieve or right-hand retrieve. So I, I retrieve left-handed, but you can set them up to go right-handed. Now, how you flip them will depend on manufacturers. When you get one out of the box, it may not be the retrieve you want. There will be instructions with the reel how to change it. Most reels have what's called a roller clutch. And it basically the way the roller clutch works, you can only turn it one way freely. When you turn it the other way, the clutch engages. And that's when it engages the drag. So if you start to pull out the opposite way, the roller clutch engages. So if you were to wind on your reel the wrong way without uh, bothering to reverse it, what would happen is your drag would be working when you're trying to reel and when the fish was running the line out, there's no drag. So that's not very good. So you have to know, you know, you can put it left hand, right hand, that's your choice, but you have to know ahead of time how to flip it over. And basically it usually uh, involves taking that roller clutch and just turning it uh, upside down, basically. You take it one way, turn it around, put it back down again. And when you do that, you've reversed the direction of the wind. Now, a few of the other, there's some other styles out there that are more complicated, but the vast majority of them are done with a roller clutch. Pick it up, turn it over, put it back down, you reverse the direction of the reel. So if you're going to go out and buy a reel for your fly fishing, you really have to ask yourself a few questions. Um, am I going uh, saltwater or fresh? Am I going for big species that run or species that don't run? If you're after species that don't run, like uh, bass, pike, that sort of thing, if they do run, it's only for a short distance. An ordinary reel with a, you know, you know no nothing drag, that's going to be fine. You can buy a relatively cheap reel, use them for bass, and you won't have any problems. It'll work great. However, if you're after species that run, for example, carp, steelhead, you know, salmon, you better have a, a, a freshwater reel with a good drag because I've actually burned out one on a carp. I could hardly turn the reel. It was a, a cheap reel that I was using for bass. I was fishing for bass. I didn't care. I used a cheap reel and I hooked a 15 pound carp that took off and fried the reel. It generated so much heat, the reel was seizing. So, you know, it is a big deal. If you go after carp, or if you go after, uh, as I say, steelhead, salmon, you better have a reel with a decent drag. So you, you, you don't have to spend money for bass, but you want to spend a bit of good money on a reel for carp, steelhead, salmon, whatever. When you go into salt water, you've just moved it up one more notch because everything has to be corrosion resistant in the reel. And it has to be super tough because if you think freshwater fish run, you should try saltwater fish 
they can easily burn up a cheap drag very, very quickly. So you want something like a robust reel like this if you're going to go saltwater fishing. And they're always bigger. You'll notice that they're quite big compared to freshwater reels of the same line size. They're just so robust. They're also heavier too. And there's good reason for that. I, I've been saltwater fishing since 1999, and, and trust me, I've had my fair share of runners, and I've been very thankful that the reels I've had had decent drags, and I was able to uh, hang on to the fish, you know, and with, with good luck, I get them in. If you're going after trout fishing, you don't need a drag at all, just a click and pull will do. But if you, um, you know, that's hard to find these days. You'd be surprised. Most, this, this trout reel, little tiny trout reel, it has... A drag it's like really um, this style here with the standard arbor and a click and pawl I mean really you, we, we fish with reels like this for literally over a century so yes this is a lovely reel but it's probably overkill for trout but you know I use them for trout anyway I love them it's a beautiful reel but you get to a point with trout fishing uh, when you're buying a reel, whether you're going from, I'm going to get a really, really expensive reel because I like it, but you don't have to get an expensive reel for trout if you don't want to. You can get a relatively cheap reel. It'll work just fine. You know, bass, I wouldn't waste money on the reel. Trout, eh, maybe spend a little bit more money. But uh, salt water, money. Okay. And also true with uh, runners in fresh water. You want something decent, something with a drag that won't overheat and uh, seize up on you. So there you go. There's fly reels. They're not overly complicated, but there are a few things to know. You want to make sure that if you're going for saltwater fishing, you're getting a real saltwater grade reel with a seal drag. If you're going after bass fishing, you don't have any, to need anything fancy for that. But if you're going after runners, you know, fish that will run, you, you want a, a good freshwater reel with a good drag. And, oh, one last thing. If you're into cold water fishing like I am, getting to uh, uh, steelhead fishing when the temperature is below freezing, uh, the um, seal drag are very, very handy because you don't want ice build up inside your drag. And that can happen too. Anyway, there we go. Fly reels. Get out there and have some fun with them. Cheers.